Okay, we're going to look at section 3.6. In particular, we're going to look at the invertible matrix theorem. Uh, there's nothing new here. It's just we're going to recast some of the stuff we've been doing and make some connections between things we've already seen. So we'll go over the goals. Uh, before we get going, I'm going to talk about the composition of linear transformations and relate that to matrix multiplication. Then I'm going to look at the special case where we have a linear transformation where the codomain and the domain are the same. So it's going to take something from Rn put it into Rn. Uh, we'll look at some of the ramifications of that and then do some examples. So by the end of this you should be able to uh, be able to calculate products of two matrices and relate those things as compositions of linear transformations. Uh, if a matrix is invertible you should be able to determine the inverse of the matrix and you should be able to uh, relate the column space of the matrix to whether or not an inverse exists and whether or not uh, a solution to a linear system has one, zero, or infinite solution. Okay, first thing I want to do is look at composition of linear transformations and try to interpret what we mean when we multiply two matrices. So suppose we have two matrices. We have A, it's n by n, B is n by key, n by k. So that means I can go through and do the operations to take A times B. Uh, so what am I going to do with that? Suppose I've got uh, these matrices, that means I can define linear transformations, T and S. So T goes from Rn to Rm. So I can think of this as Tx is going to give me some y and Ax equals y. And then S is the same thing. So S of y is going to give me some vector b. And I can think of S as uh, having a matrix b associated with it. So b times y is going to be some vector b. So now if, let's look at this transformation that's given by the composition. So if I compose s of t of x, does that make sense? So x is something in Rn. t of x gives me something in Rm. s is going to take something in Rm <clears throat> and give me something in Rk. So that's going to be some vector, <coughs> excuse me, in RK. So what does this mean? Well T, <coughs> excuse me, I can represent as A times X. So that's going to be A times X. This I can think of this as some vector Y. So S of Y is what? B times Y, but B is A times X. So if I think of the matrix B times A, that's the same thing as looking at S of T, or the composition of S and T, acting on the original input X. All right, so we're going to look at this special case. Special case is, that suppose I have a linear, com uh, linear transformation that goes from Rn to Rn. What does that imply? Well, suppose I know in advance that this t is a one-to-one -one function. So that means if I have a solution, it's got to be unique. So if I have ax equals b, right, and I'm assuming the matrix A is the transformation, or the matrix associated with this transformation, that means if this thing exists, if, or sorry, if b is in the range of this, or in the column space of A, then that has to be true. Okay. This immediately tells me, though, that um, the uh, columns of A have to be linearly independent. That's true because 0 has to be in the range of A, because if x equals 0, that's the solution, Ax equals 0. But since it's 1 to 1, x equals 0 is the only solution. That's the only way that can be true. And because a times x is a linear combination of the columns of a, right, that's going to be some x1, a1, plus x2, a2. Since the only way for this to be true is that x1, x2, x3 is 0, that means the columns of a are linearly independent. What does that mean? That means then that if I go and put this in an augmented matrix, So I got the first column of A, oops, second column of A, on over, and if that's going to be equal to some B, 
right? If, uh, because there's only one solution to this when this is B, that means if I put this in row echelon form, every row is going to have, sorry, I should say, every column is going to have a pivot because it's one to one. And that means now because I have in columns and the same number of rows, every row is going to have a uh, pivot. And so that means a must be an onto function. So if a is going to be onto and uh, every solution is unique, that means a inverse exists. Okay. Likewise, suppose I tell you that uh, ax is equals b is onto. So that means if I take ax equals b, no matter what b I put in there in Rn, I've always got a solution. And I'm going to go back to this argument up here. That means that if I put this um, in an augmented matrix, put it in row echelon form, since there's always a solution, every row is going to have a pivot now. But because I have the same number of rows as columns, every column has to have a pivot. And that's going to imply that A is 1 to 1. Okay? So I can, that means since A is 1 to 1, sorry, A is 1 to 1, that means X has to be unique. And because it's onto, I can put any B in R in there. So this is always a unique solution. And that means, again, for the same reason that I put up here, AX equals 0 has only one solution. And that means that the columns of A are independent. And all this also means that the inverse exists. Okay. So be, this idea that the number of rows and the number of columns are the same and when you think about this in terms of row echelon form or the reduced row echelon form uh, is a really powerful result. And what ends up happening is that if you show any one of these things here, so you can show that if A is invertible or if A has n pivots in its row echelon form, if uh, AX equals 0, X equals 0 is the only solution, or that the columns of A are linearly independent, uh, or that columns of A form a basis, um, there's a unique solution, a, or uh, AX equal, or the linear transformation given by AX uh, is invertible or one-to-one -one or onto, everything else follows. So if I want to show that A is invertible, for example, I just have to show any one of these things. All right, so any one of these statements implies everything else. And basically, many of the proofs are, follow the same kind of structures I discussed on the previous page. Um, but in terms of the uh, book, go to page 183 of the ILA book and take a look at that. Um, and that'll give you some insights into that. Um, okay, so this is a really important result. Right? If, I want to sh if I've got a matrix A, and I want to know, does A inverse exist? I basically just have to show any one of those properties. And because they're equivalent, this is one of those rare cases that uh, it goes both ways. Uh, if you show that any one of those statements in the previous page is not true, then A inverse will not exist. Okay, so this is kind of a license to kill. It means that if you have a matrix and uh, one of the things that you have above, if any one of these things is easier to show or work with than the other, you can just do that one thing. So it gives you a great deal of flexibility. All right. So in, uh, in terms of what this means, this has a number of ramifications, right? So for example, if uh, A is invertible, that means then that if I put this thing in, in an augmented matrix, and I put it in row echelon form, then I'm going to have all zeros below the diagonal. And uh, I'm going to have a pivot in every row and every column. So now when I put this in reduced row echelon form, I'm going to go to each pivot. So I'll start here. I'll put zeros there using row operations, then zeros there. And what I'll end up with is the identity matrix there. I'll have all ones on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. Okay. Uh, right. And if uh, one thing it means then is if I solve this equation right here, if x necessarily has to be 0, then the inverse exists. Okay. 
and as well. Right? If a is invertible, that means the only solution to this is x equals 0. Uh, that, uh, that tells me something about the columns of a. Right? Not only that, it also means that the columns of a are a basis for rn. Again, there's a bunch of these properties, and this is on page 184 of the ILA. Uh, please take a look at that and go through all those. There's um, a, a lot of details, and uh, it's pretty easy to read. Your author does a good job of explaining these.